video cassettes came from the program on ecstasy. It's quarter to four in the morning. The dance floor is crowded with frenetic people. You can barely hear yourself think. And we've counted 30 ecstasy dealers at least. Teachers, doctors and parents all want to know more about ecstasy, but especially parents. And from the look of the people in there, most of them are on E. The parents who wanted videos to show their children told us that the ecstasy problem was perhaps even worse than we'd reported. Indeed, as MP Anthony Steen said in the House of Commons about ecstasy use in his Brixham constituency, The drug is readily available it's more readily available than cream teas. It's a staggering thought, that, that ecstasy should be as readily available as a cream tea. Perhaps Mr. Stating his case somewhat. Here in Brixham, a cream tea is around three pounds, an ecstasy tab around 20. But the point is well made. Ecstasy is available in almost any town if you care to look. But here in Brixham, the parents are fighting back. Down by the harbour, the scaffolding goes up. It's for a rave last Saturday night, but it's to be a rave with a declared difference. The parents of Youth Concern Brixham, with a little help from the Cook Report, meet to organise a rave without drugs. Right, can we have a look at your, yeah. your artwork then, uh, please? There's two ideas on there. Uh, the first subject is publicity. That is the first. Oh, great. That's the general colour of the poster and the general shape of the artwork. It's supposed to be a record, obviously. The parents want to prove to the kids that you don't need ecstasy to enjoy yourself. They don't underestimate the problems they face. You've got to have searching. Mm. The kids yeah. try and bring any drink in or anything like that. Was that yeah. a body and a bag search? Or just a body and a bag search, yeah. Uh, the council's quite happy with that and the police are as well. Uh, and also okay. we'll search the yeah, area before the event in case any kids oh, before yeah. and inducted over the fence. Good afternoon, everybody. Everybody knows that teenagers often have too much time on their hands. It's just boring. There's nothing to do. The only the local kids end up hanging around the arcades all the time and that creates problems. On the quayside, the parents are distributing tickets for the rave. There are plenty of takers, but fighting ecstasy is an uphill battle. A few miles away at the regular Friday night rave at a popular out-of-town nightclub, there were strict security searches that ecstasy was openly on sale inside nevertheless we bought e-tabs from this man and when we offered the hope of lucrative business not at the Brixham rave greed won the day again on the way to the meeting he said he'd popped one of his e's to test its quality he came with his partner whom we'd already seen dealing at that nightclub he started by boasting about the number of tablets he'd sold there on just one night. So can they be got down here? Oh, yeah. Yeah? In bulk? Yeah. I'd have up to 10,000. Up to 10,000? Four couple of them. Have you? Put a couple of samples for us. Two of the dealers who fuel the ecstasy scene in the West Country. We'll be catching up with them again later. Posing as tourists, Brown had no chance. He went into a terminal coma after taking just one ecstasy tablet. And we were talking to him, and my daughter said, look, Mum, he's crying. And tears were coming out of the corner of his eyes. As if to say, we're sorry, Mum. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm sorry, Dad. And uh, a few seconds later, he died.
Now they campaign against Eve and were invited to the Brixham rave for an ecstasy debate the next day. It was their first rave, and Mrs. Brown said she could understand why the youngsters enjoyed themselves so much. In the event, it rained all night, but that didn't dampen the enthusiasm of the teenagers or the parents from Youth Concern Brixham, who'd organised it in five short days. We're very, very concerned. Not so much from the point of view that we have a problem, it's not greater than anybody else's, but we would rather prevent it than have to cure it. We would like them to understand that you don't need drugs, you don't need alcohol to enjoy yourself. Ecstasy certainly isn't the safe designer drug some claim. It's an illegal Class A drug, which has already killed 17 youngsters. So with a drug-free dancers enjoying themselves. Yeah, yeah, but it's a knife-edge situation. Whilst the Brixham youngsters had an ecstasy-free evening, if they had gone to that out-of-town nightclub, they could have bought openly, as we did on two separate occasions. By now, we'd identified the main dealer as Dean Applin. Dean Applin, Roger Cook, Central Television. If I could tell us about your uh, dealing in ecstasy. You know that's a criminal offence, don't you? Yeah, right. It is a criminal offence to deal in ecstasy. Yeah. You offered us 10,000 tablets yeah. and we bought from you. We bought from you. What have you got to say about it? It's a criminal offence. Yeah, right. And you bought, and we bought, and you sold on two consecutive occasions. Yeah. Yes? In Brabeer Manor. Yeah. I'm afraid you did. We filmed you, and we also filmed you offering to sell us 10,000 tablets for five pounds each. Yes, yes. Don't be fooled by the battered car. Applin claims to make a thousand pounds a night. We'll be following him, as we do with all our investigations. report and to discuss the dangers of ecstasy. Well, I'd never take drugs anyway, but no. I mean, I definitely won't take that one now, you know, because like, that right one. Your side up and stuff. No, sure. Has it positively made your mind up that you are one of those who will definitely always say no? Yeah. Because that will be worth my journey. Yeah. Mrs. Brown's son, remember, was killed by one tablet. Why is it that more young people can't just say no? Because, oh, because you can't, you can't just say no, because you're acting sort of, yeah, you're like, all these people come at you and they're like showing off and they think that, that you know, they're really, yeah, it's been actually part of the scene, you can't, it's not just peer pressure, it's everybody. It takes guts to say no, you haven't got to be part of a peer group because everybody else is doing it. Stand up, be an individual and say no. 80% of the kids in, in Torbay are taking, um, or uh, in some, involved in drugs in some, some description, I mean. That just goes to show you some it, doesn't it? You don't feel as though you're a bit weak-willed to actually yeah. say yes. It's not, it's not no, just You don't feel at all stupid. I mean, I would, that's why I haven't, I haven't done nothing, is because I don't need to, like, say... Yes, you are. There's a lot of I don't need to say... <laughs> Two weeks before I found out my son had been taking it, oh. I'd sat and said to my husband, you know, we brought up four children and, you know, one thing, they've never done drugs. You know, I just didn't believe that my son was capable of doing it. If the parents in this country don't take their responsibilities as they should, and that's not a criticism because it might be out of ignorance, but I'd like to see more parents getting educated. It was a positive meeting with the generation gap effectively bridged. But here, as almost everywhere, the temptation of ecstasy remains. At Verbeer Manor, the management are now considering whether to run raves at all. And it's down to those two dealers. Eddie Baker lives in Exeter, is unemployed and claims social security. So does Dean Applin, who also has convictions for grievous bodily harm and criminal damage. His father was appalled when he heard his son was breaking the law again by dealing in drugs. Like, all right, taking drugs is bad enough, but pushing them, I've never had a lot of love for the people who do that. And that's, that's the thing that really sickens me, that he's doing that. He's got to 
really stop and think seriously about what he's doing with his life and with other people's lives. It was time for a showdown with his son. We got a talk. Are you in trouble, Dean? Serious trouble. And um, yeah, I've worried to death. You are in trouble, son. Until now, the father suspected his son was involved in drug dealing, but didn't have the proof. Now he has, and so tonight will the police. What happens next, we'll tell you in the next series of The Cook Report. Dean Applin, Roger Cook, Central Television.